So, hello everybody. Uh, Thomas is speaking here uh, at this panel, at this high level panel to inside our data week 2021. And uh, the panel is about data and industrial AI impact, ambition, opportunities, and challenges for Europe. So, a really, uh, hopefully, a good picture. And we have really, and I'm very honored, or we are all very honored to have a, a really big uh, auditorium of speakers, different, very distinguished guests, distinguished speakers here in this panel, and more than happy to moderate this panel. And uh, I'm not a professional moderator, I can tell you, uh, but I will do my best. Um, uh, but maybe I have some one or also more technical questions than in, the, in the background, but nevertheless. Um, uh, my name is Thomas, like I said, Thomas Hahn. I'm on the one side, um, uh, president of the Big Data Value Association, of course, happy to share this uh, event, but also inside another initiative, for example, also a vice chairman of the Gaia X uh, uh, Association, uh, and only to give you also some impact thoughts also from this side. So it's this panel, we have an, 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 an opening panel uh, from the member state, from Spain. Uh, a very warm welcome, uh, Carmel, uh, Secretary of State for Digitalization and AI uh, of Spain. And we know um, uh, that you have some kind of time, time constraints. So we start with you immediately. And afterward, uh, I will introduce the, the remaining part of the panel and the other. Carmen, the stage is yours. Many thanks. Thank you very much. Good morning. It is a pleasure to participate in this event, Data and Industrial AI, Impact Ambitions, Opportunities, and Challenges for Europe. First of all, I would like to thank the Big Data Value Association for the invitation to participate in this forum and for the opportunity to present the Spanish government's vision on data and industrial AI, a crucial issue for the digital future, as well as the policies that we are implemented to face the challenges in this field, both at Spanish and European level. We are at a key moment for Spain. The arrival of the European Recovery Funds and the implementation of Europe's Next Generation Plan provides our country with a unique opportunity to transform our production model and move towards a more sustainable, resilient, and inclusive economy. A challenge that the government of Spain is facing with enthusiasm and determination, and which has two fundamental pillars, digital transformation and ecological transition. These two key processes for the structural reforms of our economic model need to be implemented as soon as possible. Only then we will take advantage of its synergies and benefits. A transformation aimed to change the course of Spain and to consolidate a national vision that finds in the data industry one of its main assets. Let me start by saying very clearly that our European digital sovereignty is based on data sovereignty. We must move towards a competitive data economy where companies and individuals have the control of the data they produce. A control that gives the trust to put data to work, the innovation and technological development that space, Spain needs. Data is the catalyst of today's reindustrialization and the backbone of the digital transformation. It is a differentiation element that will allow us to generate innovation and value in our economy, improve decision-making thanks to better information and create quality employment. The government of Spain is aware of this transformative potential of data, and we will therefore embark in this revolution that will change the way we live and relate to technology while ensuring that European retains its sovereignty over the data generated by its citizens, companies, and public administrations. And that is why we are working together to develop a regulatory framework that respects the rights of European citizens and companies. We have seen an unprecedented growth in the wake of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, a new paradigm that has only just begun. According to a report by IDC, data globally will grow from 33 zettabytes in 2018 to 175 zettabytes by 2025. Moreover, 80% of the data expected to be in 2025 has not yet been generated. And half of this new data yet to be generated will be industrial data. The European Commission also estimates that industrial data worldwide will quadruple in the next five years. Forecasts that reflect the magnitude of the transformation ahead of us, both in Spain and Europe. We must ensure that companies, SMEs, entrepreneurs, and universities take advantage of its potential. 
an opportunity that we cannot miss to provide valuable services and products based on European industrial data. An element that allows us to increase our productivity, efficiency and competitiveness and to get closer to the needs of citizens from a more personalized and specialized point of view. The Spanish government firmly believes in this and therefore one of the main lines of action of España Digital 2025, Spain's roadmap for digitalization is data economy and digitization. We aim to make Spain a benchmark in the transformation towards a data economy, and we are going to implement measures such as incorporate data analytics into the existing value chains, which also represent a new business model in itself. To this end, we have launched the Data Office with the Chief Data Officer, a project aimed to work towards an inclusive, ethical, and transparent uses of data. Also, we have our national strategy for artificial intelligence, which a specific, with, uh, encompasses a specific measures targeting the data economy. For example, our cloud strategy will enable Spain to play an active role in common European data spaces and to promote advanced computing technologies like HPC, quantum or edge computing. Also, we would like to be involved in the Gaia X community and explore how to join other member states in accompanying the creation of a national chapter of the association. We are aligned with the aim of this community, that is to accelerate the European response in terms of digital sovereignty to ensure data availability, interoperability, and portability, and that companies comply with European standards and values. The importance of Gaia X is the intention to become a common European data infrastructure with a cloud component that provides a more secure and sovereign alternative to the existing solutions. And in the case of Spain, we are working to create specific regional and industrial data lakes in strategic sectors such as tourism, health, or agri-food. This is in line with our flagship projects listed in our digital strategy, Digital Agenda 2025. As you can see, we are facing a real revolution that will definitively mark the digital transformation ahead of us and change our relationship with technology forever. Data will be the main actor and the backbone of the reforms that Spain and the European Union need to face an economic and social recovery that puts digital at the center. We have the challenge that for the generation of value in our productive fabric and for better decision making based on evidence. And that these advances serve to bring technology closer to the citizens and make possible a digitalization at the service of people. Together, we will achieve this. Thank you very much. So, uh, many thanks, Carme uh, Artigas, uh, for this night uh, words. Uh, many thanks, Carme. And maybe also some some uh, allow me some some reflection on on this and and some some comments and then I have one dedicated uh, question uh, to you and uh, also to all of us. When you want to have some uh, question, please use the chat in 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 Vova. Um, um, uh, that of course uh, we can also from the from you all who are participating in include exist. You know you mentioned regarding data sovereignty. Uh, you you mentioned also uh, Gaia X. Um, and you mentioned also um, some kind of a holistic view because you're speaking about HPC, you're speaking connectivity, you're speaking data space, it's data value, to be honest. Uh, this is, of course, where we are, uh, let's say, completely in line, but we are trying to achieve forward. And by the way, for myself, is also the reason why I'm in this two organization positioned because it's for me are two sides of the coin, you know, the, the data spaces, data sharing, and uh, let's say, uh, also the data value part to get value out of the data because now I'm coming from Siemens uh, is always about impact. You mentioned efficiency. That's a one topic, for example, but also, and this is maybe, but I'm very sure Philip will target this later about the great new business models uh, because this uh, makes us strong. So I like really um, uh, the thoughts uh, from your side uh, about this. Uh, and uh, to build this to, uh, together uh, up, let's say, between government, private, between research, between industry, you know, uh, the communities uh, which we have to bring together. Um, but when we are um, um, uh, speaking a little bit, maybe to you on one dedicated question, you mentioned also the word, the word synergies in, in your speech. Um, what is from your perspective uh, 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 needed for strong collaboration on a European level? And how can this yeah, improve? What is your, are your wishes 
uh, for sure you can you have Ivo here in the call. You can uh, address this directly, but you can address us all. What is from your side, your thoughts, what we have to do, what is needed, where we are? Yeah, and what is a special wish also from Spain? <laughs> of course, uh, we need a strong collaboration at European level. Collaboration with the European partners is essential in order to continue developing a strong data industry with the capacity to lead this digital transformation at the global level and ensuring for me the rights of citizens and the values of the European Union. Projects such as Gaia-X mentioned above is, are essential to join forces and begin to organize and deploy these data spaces. Uh, we want to have, I would like to host one of these European data spaces in Spain, interoperable with European ones, and to be able to lead key sectors, for example, important for us, such as tourism of health. So we were, we would like to propose ourselves to, to be the pilot uh, country, if possible, to host one of these uh, spaces and, and learn from that uh, among us. This collaboration, of course, must be based on the respect for human rights and privacy, always with what we call a, a human-centric perspective. We, we are clear defenders of uh, um, technologies to humanism and, and that the technology is not a name by a means. Uh, we need to put people at the center, respecting their rights for, for data privacy and also uh, the, the intellectual proper rights of uh, industrial data. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, how you see, you know, you mentioned in industrial data and uh, for example, uh, uh, look to Hank Young uh, only as one example, we are also active in some kind of AI and data, uh, public private partner, uh, we are pushing forward to get value out of this. How you see the link from the Spanish side regarding uh, industrial AI? Um, uh, you mentioned industrial data, so I expect this is a, uh, of course, uh, no, no brainer that you're saying, okay, so, uh, is industrial AI is also a wave uh, which we have to focus. But what is your, 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 your vision on this here? Our position in the, our national data uh, governance, is, as I mentioned, is, is the need to provide an ethical approach to the big data industry and ensure and respect uh, for privacy. I'm very concerned, honestly, here on, on data flows. I think we are not approaching the, pro the, 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 um, the subject in the in-depth a technical approach we need because we confuse that with transactional data and transactional data needed to, to ensure the e-commerce uh, cross-border doesn't mean that we need to place our European data elsewhere than Europe. I am a clear defendant that location of data should be in Europe, in European soil, in clouds that are that we should, uh, pro from my point of view, oblige that uh, cloud providers should base their data centers in European soil and that the data from European citizens and the European industry should remain in European soil. And then analyze what type of data or metadata should be exchanged between countries uh, to allow for, for, for digital commerce. But I don't know if, you, if there is an enough in-depth analysis on that. Sometimes some countries defend those positions with OCDE or under Brexit from the commercial departments, not from the, the data uh, knowledge. And I think uh, I, would, I would appreciate that, that this group would give some feedback because I don't have a, a perfect answer. My feeling is that we should keep our data sovereignty in Europe that I wouldn't like to see, for example, my children's data from the school platform with a copy in a, in a place somewhere of a, an American cloud or a China cloud. So I think that's something we should, should preserve. And we are very, very concerned about this. Uh, we are also made a proposal as a country in the Data Act to consider the concept of, concept of, data, of data donors, which was not uh, considered, the possibility that we as citizens or company can allow our data to be used for scientific proposals or for any research purposes. So that requires the possibility that I can become a data owner. But if I want to become a data owner, then it does somewhere, I need to ask, give me all the data that you have for me and allow me for portability. So can, how, we, how can we rule that? That's a different question that we are now posing on the table. And for me, uh, we must generate trust uh, when dealing with information. That is our most important strategic asset. Um, and this is a hallmark and the perspective which both Spain and Europe uh, must face the challenge of developing this data industry as fundamental pillar of digital transformation. With regards to AI, our national AI strategy aims to provide this framework and impetus for the private sector by applying AI and data industry. We are interested in sharing governmental data with private sector, but also creating the standards where data, that private uh, uh, sector should share the data among this. I'm among them. So my challenge is 
am I allowed to impose a standard to the privacy, provide private industry? My idea is to create a standard, our G2G standard, our G2B standards, and allow them to use that standards for their B2B exchanges. And that would be great if we had a common framework together, because then I can convince that the European um, data framework is the one that we should use at our national level in all these exchanges, G2G, G2B, B2B. I don't know if that is possible. That's what I'm aiming to achieve in my, in my country. And also we, we do have a char charter for digital rights, a framework to guarantee the citizens' rights in the digital world. And of course, everything related to AI non-discrimination and AI bias and, and data privacy is absolutely in, in included. So I really have more questions than answers. And this is why I would like to pose the challenge also to the rest of the team. What is your view about these data flows or data location in Europe? Uh, what are the challenges we face when defining these common standards to, to, to share data together? So that's one of the outcomes I would like to, to take from participating in this group. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, for sure, we will target this uh, also in the, in the, in the, in the, in the discussion uh, later and only um, uh, to give you, um, um, you know, a little bit from the, from <coughs> the, from the um, uh, uh, let's say, uh, associations uh, work, uh, I can tell you there's a lot of ongoing regarding uh, data space, European data spaces when you're looking to, to Evo, also how we can combine um, um, exchange with differ between different verticals uh, between, uh, you have spoken about standards, uh, you know, there's a, you know, this maybe you know this from the automotive alliance, there's also from the mobility to the manufacturing, and don't ask me, energy, maybe when you're speaking from manufacturing to energy, where we have to look how we can exchange to create benefit uh, out of the data, how we can exchange data between the different verticals. That's the one topic which we are exactly. addressing um, um, in, 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 in the standardization topic and BDVA. Uh, launched, for example, uh, but uh, as I mentioned before, we do this with BDVA, with IDSA, with GAIA-X also together because we see us, let's say, also different sides of the coin. But different side is wrong, we are the same coin, uh, but we have to look from different perspectives, other different, not meaning that we differentiate uh, this topic, um, uh, how we can do this. And, you know, also the, the data space, um, um, the usage of data, let's phrase it, and this one is, is going hand in hand with uh, different data spaces for the different verticals. And there are, uh, I cannot answer every question which you have now raised. Uh, I can also uh, 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 saying that, let's say, on our, on our radar screen, and uh, I'm not uh, fearing that we have in the next years uh, uh, nothing to do in this area, vice versa, we have to do uh, a lot. Uh, but I think we're coming closer and closer to a setup um, um, uh, that we can address this. And now I would phrase the word, uh, let's say, together, uh, because that is, let's say, uh, what we have to do uh, at the end. And as said, again, coming from industry, you know, the so one side is a to get some benefit out of the data for actual uh, topics, where we, to be honest, also have in Europe our strengths, uh, because in a lot of domains we are in a very good position worldwide, but we have to be careful and we have to look on the other side, um, uh, what are new business opportunities, new business cases, you know, and all the stories about service and so on, uh, which we have to, to target uh, in, in this area. But to be honest, uh, uh, you raised a lot of questions, very good questions. I cannot answer this question. I can I, only give you the confidence that we are doing this. <laughs> I just, I just, I just, you gave me the floor, so just give me more, 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 more questions. And the other thing probably we should approach together is all the risks we are raising on, on cybersecurity that we are all aware. That is, I think probably we should start talking about cyber defense instead of cyber security, yeah. because the key now is how can we react? It's, it's very different to so keep that. And of course, anything we define and the standards we define for these data spaces must include, of course, cyber security standards. And you're absolutely right. We have to look at, uh, let's say, uh, it's a stack from the compute storage, where you mentioned the HPC, the connectivity, security for connectivity, which you just mentioned. Uh, the data sharing data spaces to get value out of the data and to the impact uh, regarding the different verticals, but also across the verticals. Yes, it's, it's, it will not become boring for us all in the next years, but that's good. So uh, many, many thanks uh, to you. And I want not to, to have the uh, other panel. Um, and uh, please, when I look sometimes to the right, 
from my side to the right side. Uh, uh, I look, have only a second screen. Uh, it's not unpolite that I look, but you see, I see there's a chat, and when a, a question is coming up, to take care for. But now I want to to open up the panel um, to the other panelists and. Many, many thanks, uh, Carmen, to make this. Thank intro. you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah. and uh, everybody's knowing that you have some appointment. And anyway, we will speak us very soon uh, regarding the different hubs. We can meet in the next meeting. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, thanks, uh, okay. uh, Carmen. And now I'm uh, opening up. And uh, as I said before, uh, I want not to be unpolite, uh, but we have some kinds uh, of, of time constraints, like always. Uh, but now I want to uh, invite and to welcome uh, and to give a very very warm, warm welcome to all the other um, um, uh, panelists. So you have uh, Ivo Wollmann, um, director, uh, acting director at uh, director at G Data um, uh, at DG Connect from the Commission. A warm welcome uh, to you, Ivo. Uh, thanks to see you again, because uh, the one other knowing is we don't ask how many years we are uh, knowing each other for, for several years. Uh, then we have uh, Lara from, from uh, Digital Europe, uh, policy director at Digital Europe. Uh, we have uh, Philip um, um, uh, from Applied AI, director at Applied AI. Uh, which is some kind of, yeah, but if it's bigger later about this, uh, from Entrepreneur Center in, 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 in Munich, uh, Startup Center. We have uh, 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 Stephanie uh, from, from Austria, and, uh, 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 and we have, uh, uh, let's say, a, a very, and we have, uh, for sure, we have uh, the local uh, uh, representatives and many thanks in hosting this event. Also, when this is virtual, uh, but let's say in our heart is in Portugal today, Rui, um, and uh, let's say to speak about this. And last but not least, I think I forgot uh, Hank Young. Uh, I hope I forgot nobody. As I said before, I'm not a professional moderator. Hank Young, uh, also warm welcome uh, from your, your side. And now I would give really um, uh, as a starting uh, to Ivo the floor. Uh, also, we have now heard uh, Carme giving some kind of perspective um, uh, from a member state from, from, from Spain. Um, and as you can imagine, we have also from uh, uh, small and medium price enterprises, from research, from startup centers, from industry associates, as 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 sorts later. Uh, but maybe, uh, uh, of course, uh, you were a great turnaround for me and for us all uh, that you are starting with your uh, uh, thoughts uh, about and give some kind of your yeah, introduction of words uh, and then we will follow with the answers and then we are going over to the panel discussion. Ivo, the stage is yours. Yeah, <clears throat> many thanks, Thomas. And also thanks for the invitation to be part of this panel. I, I'm really happy to be here. And I would like to, to thank the Secretary of State for her uh, inspiring uh, opening remarks and also for the the positive position that Spain has taken in the negotiations on the on the Data Governance Act. Now we, we are indeed at a, at a really crucial moment for the data economy, and and we think that Europe has everything to play for, but we have to act now, and we have to act together. Now why does it matter? Of course, I think that the the public here knows why it matters. Um, data is is crucial for AI. No AI without data. Um, data is essential for the efficiency of all companies in all different sectors. And data is a source of innovation. Um, it can be used by startups, by SMEs. It's raw material for those companies. You don't need a lot of capital investment to set up a data company. And that's why data is so crucial. And of course, data is also um, very relevant for tackling societal challenges. Uh, it will help us to live healthier and longer lives. It will help us to combat climate change, uh, to cut energy consumption. And there are many more um, of these applications. Now, that's why we put on the table last year the European strategy for data. And there we propose to build a real um, internal market for data that has four key characteristics. And the first one is that there must be data flows, data flows between countries, but also between sectors. Secondly, uh, there must be a lot of data, a lot of high quality data available for use. Thirdly, Karma uh, has mentioned it already, this should be done in full respect of European values, right? And last but not least, there must be fair 
and clear rules for who can access and use what types of data. Now, um, the strategy has four big pillars. The first one is regulatory. The second one is about data infrastructures. The third one is about skills. And the fourth one is about data spaces. Let me get into the first and the last pillar. Um, a few words on the legislative agenda. So we put on the table a proposal for a Data Governance Act. That's about building trust. Uh, Carmen mentioned it. It's, it's really important to have trust in data sharing to make it happen. And uh, the Data Governance Act does that by regulating data intermediaries. It's the organizations that bring together the supply and the demand uh, for data. Then, of course, there was the uh, the Digital Markets Act that the Commission put on the table last uh, December. And that's about uh, the power of gatekeepers. And data plays a big role in that power uh, by leveraging the potential of data across different sectors. That is part of the, uh, the position of, the, of these gatekeepers. Um, open data, uh, we're working on an implementing act to make a lot of um, high value open data sets available in machine readable formats through APIs. So it can be very easily used also by SMEs and for AI purposes for that matter. And then last but not least, we're preparing a data act that is going to look at um, what is fair and what is not fair in terms of the allocation of value of data to different actors in the data value chain. For example, in the case of co-generated uh, data. Now. The common European data spaces, uh, a few words on that. If you ask our engineers what is a, a common European data space, they will talk about the infrastructures, they will talk about the machines, and they will talk about the tools. If you ask the lawyers, they will talk about governance, they talk about legislation, about co-regulation, about agreements and sets of agreements. Well, actually, a data space in a sector is the combination of both. It's the combination of the infrastructure and the governance structures. And why do we need these data spaces? Well, because we realize that a one size fits all model does not always work across the different sectors. Um, if you look at health data, it's quite different from manufacturing data, both in terms of the type of data that we're talking about, and also the, the types of players that are involved in the governance. And so that's why we need these data spaces. But of course, we must make sure that we don't create new silos. There, the issue of interoperability between the different sectors has been mentioned already, and that's going to be one of the big challenges. We think that uh, our data innovation board proposed in the Data Governance Act can play a very important role there to make this interoperability uh, happen. Okay, I'm almost getting to my seven minutes. So a final comment on the funding programs. Um, so the Digital Europe program and Horizon Europe are going to play a big role in setting up the, the data spaces. And of course, the PPP, the BDVA, has played an enormous uh, role already in the past and has been very successful in challenging investments on data-related research and innovation over the last few years. Now, let's take this model further in Horizon Europe in the new PPP um, that will work on AI data and robotics. And I remember, Thomas, we had the first discussions on seeing how we could make this happen, this, this merger of the, um, of the different communities. And I think it's, it's about to happen now after a few years of intense discussion. Um, a very last point about what, what Carmen mentioned about the international data flows there. The commission has taken the position that we are open we're open, but at the same time, we will take an assertive uh, position towards international data flows. So uh, we have to be careful with European data. And you see that back in the Data Governance Act when we talk about sensitive public sector data so held by the public sector um, that is being opened up. We have to be careful, and that's why there is a number of safeguards uh, in place uh, to ensure that. I leave it at that uh, for now. Okay, uh, many thanks, Ivo, uh, for, for this uh, uh, introduction and uh, also to give you your thoughts or your perspective and also many thanks to reflecting, let's say, uh, different aspects uh, from the commission which, which you're looking at this. And you mentioned uh, BDV, PPP, you're right, uh, I said this, uh, it's an opening uh, half an hour ago, we are 
not maybe for, uh, one hour ago, so a little bit longer, um, uh, regarding that we achieved, uh, uh, I wanted to give you a feeling, we triggered around 2.5 billion uh, uh, private investment, Just don't ask me how many, not to repeat this again, which is of course, uh, um, uh, let's say, very significant. And of course, uh, where we are working on it is really to get the spaces, you know, we have also established some kind of infrastructure when you're speaking about eye spaces, when you're speaking about working groups, when you're speaking about documents, when you're speaking about community, because all is about us, how we can uh, put this also uh, towards, let's say, eye data and robotics, which you mentioned before, Hank Young, you know, we both, uh, uh, for example, at the board of the uh, AI data and robotics uh, activity. So, um, and how we, we bring this together. And on the other side, you have to write, you mentioned this, also the two sides with government and, and data spaces. I mentioned the two sides with data infra, as well as a technical person, data infrastructure, get value out of the data. And I think we are in a really good, good way. And remember what I said to Karma regarding the different stacks that you can build on it, but we have to build on it. I think that's uh, uh, an important topic uh, where we have to look at, at this. So many, many thanks. Um, now I want to hand over uh, uh, to, 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 to Lara. You know, Lara is representing today uh, uh, digital Europe. Uh, so let's say a significant industry uh, association on, 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 on European level and more than happy um, to uh, hear uh, uh, about you, about your thoughts, also critical. And as you know from Carme, we are also open uh, to accept some questions, which maybe not can answer immediately, um, uh, but at least we, we could try uh, to work on it. So Lara, the floor is yours when you're just putting your um, uh, on full, full screen mode, your screen is now visible. So perfect, thanks. Great. Thank you, thank you very much, Thomas, and thank you very much for the invitation to uh, to be here today. Uh, indeed, as Digital Europe, we see a, a great potential in uh, in industrial and, uh, data and, and AI um, for all the re reasons already mentioned uh, earlier by by, by Ivo and uh, and Karma. So before we go into into some of the details, um, we want to start by saying, you know. What is the big picture? What do we want to achieve? And also, uh, how do we how do we measure progress? So there is this huge potential, but looking at at the data economy now, it it represents only three percent of, um, of 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 the EU's D GDP, uh, and we think that by twenty twenty five, this should be uh, at least six uh, percent. So there is there is some work to uh, to be done. Secondly, at the moment, only 12% of SMEs are using big data analytics, and we think this should be uh, at least 50% 50, uh, 50 by 2025. Um, another slide with some, with some figures, but to set the scene, um, if you look at, at the private investments in AI, we're really, we're really behind uh, if you compare ourselves to, to North America and, and Asia that are, that are spending more than, more than five times. So how do we how do we catch up and how can we accelerate the adoption and uptake of uh, industrial AI? And I mean, there there are a lot of details, and uh, I've been given uh, seven minutes, and I think it will already be uh, <laughs> be a bit short uh, to to elaborate on this. But we see three key areas that require attention, and the first. We already uh, addressed it, of course, is the uh, importance of increasing data availability and, and access to high quality data sets. Second key area is to enhance access to capital, so the overall investment framework. And third, and it was mentioned, is really to, to, to build trust and to reinforce also skills uh, in order to um, to accelerate the uh, the uptake. So first of all, on on data, and there we we see an important role also for the regulatory framework, as already addressed also by by Evo. It can, uh, and this is actually what's all on the table this this year. So we're we're all quite busy, but uh, the regulatory framework is really important uh, to to provide the, the legal certainty, but also to create a truly European market for, for data, um, to, to have interoperability, um, cross-border uh, commerce, and uh, avoid really market fragmentation. And, and that is actually something we, we have uh, seen also from, from SMEs in particular, is that that is still a key challenge uh, for them. Uh, you know, in order to scale up in, in, in Europe, they, they need to have a, a true European market. So. 
the regulatory framework for that is, is very important. Uh, Data Governance Act, uh, of course, but also the, the AI Act that we have now uh, on the table, later the Data Act uh, this year, and of course the creation of the data spaces. So I will not go into all the details, but just to emphasize the really the importance of, of the framework and that this year is really, and, and of course also next, next year, but is really uh, an opportunity for us to, to get the framework uh, right and and uh, make sure that we're you know delivering on, uh, on 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 the let's say the kpis that i that i mentioned earlier so then if we go i will not go into the details of the data governance act uh, i think uh, Eva already uh, did that and uh, we we see it really as a great opportunity uh, in particular to support uh, the creation of the data spaces um, and and also uh, as i mentioned to really have uh, a european uh, market for data and to avoid um, you know the, the thinking in silos or, or, or national approaches uh, around this um, the data spaces and they were mentioned I think the, the health data space is already quite uh, yeah, it's, it's already a bit more advanced than some of the uh, the others but it's a great opportunity and just indeed to emphasize here also once more is the importance also of the interoperability between between these sectors and uh, do not think here in, in in silos because that's exactly uh, also a concern that 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 we have that 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 could lead to this and a great opportunity or a project is that is uh, that is linked uh, here is is Gaia X uh, Digital Europe is also a day one member we we see it really as a great opportunity as an as a industry-led uh, initiative to, to look at what are the business needs, the drivers for data sharing, what are some of the obstacles and how how can it how can it work in practice and uh, i think that is also you know what we see as the the biggest potential here is to to have it as a let's say like a kind of a, almost like a, a sandbox uh, where we can test some of the you know the, the rules regulations but also in terms of the, the really the use cases in the different sectors on 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 yeah making the data sharing uh, work so we have we have we, we see really uh, yeah some some great opportunities uh, in in this project and want to take an, an active role in, um, in 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 making this uh, making this happen um to yeah and to increase the 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 cloud uptake but also as i mentioned you know only 12 percent of smes use big data analytics uh, now so there's really a key role uh, also here for, for for them for all companies of all sizes to uh, to play then the third uh, element i want to raise in terms of data data access and data transfers and i mean this is a topic almost in itself so i don't want to Go into too much detail here, but since it was mentioned by um, by, by the Secretary of State and to some extent also by Evo, is uh, of course the international uh, data transfers, and we have done uh, some some surveys and are currently working also on a study which actually shows the importance of these international uh, data transfers, in particular, actually also for the manufacturing uh, sectors. So um, without going into all the details, I'm happy to answer any questions, of course, later on, but it's just to emphasize that we should not you know, isolate ourselves as Europe, but keep an open uh, approach. Um, of course, the, the Schrems II uh, ruling uh, ha has an impact on, uh, on, on, the, on the, the international data um, sharing and the transfers, but it is, it, it is still at this point, it's very important when we talk about data availability, uh, data sharing, uh, et cetera, it, it still plays a very important role. So. I just wanted to to mention it here, as we see it also as a key uh, aspect when we talk about uh, data availability at at this point. So I will not go into too much uh, details here. Then the access to capital, the finance, and and here this is this is really a key point also from from all the surveys we've done uh, is that. As we speak now, uh, only 6.9% of uh, research and innovation spending is targeted at, um, at ICT. We think that this should really be increased at least to, to 10% by, by 2025. And of course, we have we have quite some some great programs out there, the Horizon Europe and and Digital Europe programs, where uh, where AI um, should should play take an even more prominent uh, prominent role. And 
the uh, national uh, uh, the recovery resilience funds were, were also already mentioned. And in fact, Spain, uh, I think, is, is really also uh, can be seen as a great example with with its national plan, with quite some some amb ambitious targets and and clear KPIs on on what should uh, what should be done. 20% of, of the spending should be directed towards uh, towards digital. And um, there is the 20%, but there's also the 37% for the green recovery. And there is also some, some great opportunity for uh, investments in digital technologies for the green transformation of, uh, of, of other sectors. So, the, this is really also an, an area that that is uh, that, that provides a lot of opportunities and to really uh, to really make it uh, make it happen. I mean, the investments in terms of of infrastructure, but also investments in the different sectors will um, will will play a key uh, a key role. I think I'm I'm getting a bit short on time, so I but I still want to address the third key area that uh, that we see in terms of. Um, accelerating the uptake of industrial data and AI, and that is uh, to build trust and to improve digital skills. Um, first, on, in terms of trust, we need to take away some of the, the, the uncertainties that are currently there when we talk about uh, uh, AI and the seven uh, principles that were established by the, uh, the high-level expert group on AI. Uh, can play a, a quite an important role here, and they are also reflected in the uh, in the AI Act, um, and and this is really key, and also something we see in particular also with some of the SMEs is that the the trust in the technology, but also a more a better understanding in uh, in the technology is actually key to accelerate the uptake, uh, and of course there's a part on on the regulatory framework. But also, um, there there can be more support, in particular around um, the education and and training programs. So, if we see uh, currently that the, there's there's really a need to to enhance uh, the uh, the digital skills, also in terms of upskilling the the current workforce, um, and also creating a, a better understanding in the uh, in the, in the curriculum at schools to um, yeah to to train the the workforce uh, you know for 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 the future. Let's say we have a, a lot of uh, uh, jobs for the future on uh, on AI, and if you think especially in an industrial setting. Uh, there, there are great opportunities in terms of automation, uh, but that requires, of course, a, a slightly different skill set, uh, and, and that requires, therefore, um, yeah, further focus and, uh, and investments. So, with that, uh, I, I will close here. But I'm very happy to, to further elaborate or answer some questions, of course, later on, because I, uh, I realize this is quite a lot of information. But I wanted to, to address all these, uh, these key points that we see. Thank you. Many thanks, Lara, also to make it very structured, let's say, in the, in the three categories uh, which you have uh, just uh, uh, shown. And only allow me uh, to comment uh, the three topics. Uh, uh, and you mentioned also manufacturing industry, let's say, on the, on the second position. It's an absolute burning topic at the moment for us. I can tell you coming from, from a manufacturing company, and like I said before, for the efficiency reason to improve the, uh, the, the, the production or the processes, but also, and as it's uh, always a highlight, also to get a, a new business model out of this based on data. And this is where we are, I can tell you where the companies are inside. Second issue regarding your numbers regarding the world in Europe. Uh, you're right, I have an, a number regarding a uh, study seen regarding um, the increase of AI business uh, comparison uh, world to Europe. It's not the absolute number, it's a growth rate. And uh, this makes me a little bit nervous because still the world growth rate is higher than uh, let's say our European uh, growth rate where we have to look carefully inside. And last but not least, uh, regulatory uh, uh, framework, you're right. Um, um, uh, and I'm also as person was in this alliance topic involved inside, as I say, AI alliance topic, high level group you mentioned, uh, for example, it's right to create uh, trust and confidence, and especially when you're speaking about AI application, also the acceptance in the broader society is a topic. Uh, but on the other side, of course, it has, has to help all of us, meaning also to 
to establish new possibilities because when we do it in the right way, then it could also, and, um, put my company hat again on, on, my, on my shoulder, is also some kind of additive, additive advantage selling point around the world uh, when we have the right uh, regulation. But we're all working on this and we are aware of this. So now I want to hand over uh, to Rui uh, from, from uh, Portugal. Uh, more than happy and uh, um, to have you with you on supporting this event. And maybe um, allow me one word up front uh, uh, um, um, coming from a, a big company, uh, but being well aware when you're looking in different verticals that the backbone of our European economy, uh, you know, is strongly based uh, on, on small and medium sized uh, enterprises. I know this numbers only from, from, from Germany, but I'm very sure this is valid also in, in other countries that maybe there's a Siemens, there's a Bosch. Uh, there's an AVB, uh, but in manufacturing industry, 80% is from the economy, from the GDP, which is quite significant uh, for manufacturing in Germany, is covered from small and medium sized enterprises. So many thanks to you. And now you can, um, uh, the stage is you, uh, you as to give us some kind of impression from your side. Good morning, everyone. So thank you, Thomas. Uh, thank you all for, for having me. Here, um, well, it, it's been a pleasure to, to work with uh, with BDVA. We we are members uh, for some time now, um, and it's uh, it's also a pleasure to to have uh, this Data Week uh, edition in Portugal uh, somehow. Um, well, I, I'm I'm the one of the two co-founders and co-CEOs of UBware. UBware is a, a Portuguese SME. Uh, well, based in, in the center of, of Portugal, um, in the beautiful cities of Aveiro and Coimbra, we are almost uh, 100 talented uh, people. So from engineers, data scientists, marketeers and, and designers. And um, well, I have here some, some slides to, to share with you our, our vision, how we deal uh, with data and well, in, in general terms, our strategy to having data as a core uh, element in our in our business. Um, so let me share here. Hopefully, you are seeing my slides now. It's starting. It's starting. Uh, okay. At the moment, uh, now we see again the the bicycle. <laughs> Yeah, uh, how we see uh, a smart city. No, not only technology, but well, people, trees, bicycles, uh, a livable city, more sustainable than, uh, well, other other views. <laughs> well, uh, uh, well, as, as I was mentioning, we come from Portugal, but we, we, we see us and we we try to promote ourselves as a, a European, uh, European uh, company. Um, all of our innovation is, is based on, on research and innovation uh, and, and development since, since the beginning, 14 years ago. So our back, uh, background was on engineering and, well, as researchers, we worked in FP5 and FP6 uh, 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 programs. So all, uh, our real core and DNA is, is backed uh, on, on research. Um, and this is done with uh, a plethora of uh, new technologies, but uh, as core businesses, we have smart cities and uh, telecom and or, or what we call future internet. Um, but let me, let me share uh, our, our strategy and our vision uh, dealing with, with these two uh, core business areas. So somehow we see them as um, complementary to each other and well somehow we are dealing with a fusion of these two core core business areas um, because we want to see uh, the city as a single integrated system so having a holistic uh, uh, perspective um, and, and in order to, to better manage these uh, these different silos we have to have an integrated integrated uh, view so, and we see it um, as a, a digital nervous system. So, um, trying to, to have an organic approach to, to city management, and um, for sure, this is uh, very aligned with uh, 
uh, data management uh, policy. So, uh, as in the in human uh, body, and there's uh, a central nervous system and a peripheral nervous system. So, transmitting signals everywhere uh, to efficiently, and this is uh, really important, to efficiently coordinate the actions of the body. Uh, if we see it in a city, we can uh, see it as the infrastructure. Not only the physical, but, but the digital uh, infrastructure. Starting on one side with the central nervous system, here we have one of our flagship uh, products, uh, what we call urban platform. So the, the platform, cloud-based and AI-based that deals with all the uh, occurrences in, in, in the city. Um, it, have, it has real-time status uh, of the city uh, and, and has at, this, at the same time a general overview of uh, short-term historical data for, for comparison with, uh, with, um, within the, the different silos and verticals of, the, of a smart city. Um, and th this makes uh, possible to, to make um, better decisions and in real time. As I was saying, uh, another um, element, key element on, on this uh, data management uh, platform is the occurrences management. So we try to, to have the best possible um, um, approach for each uh, occurrence in, in one city. So uh, involving here policy, uh, uh, policemen, so fire, uh, firemen, um, and, and civil protection, for example. Um, of course, it has a, a mobile app. And uh, well, the, 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 the key area here is the KPI analysis. So here you use um, different AI um, techniques. And, and uh, we, 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 we have always uh, well-defined metrics to 12 cities benchmark their progress um, to, towards the U UN S SDGs. Um, on the other side, we have the peripheral nervous system. So here we deal with uh, sensors, uh, all the, the gateways to, to somehow to, to make the, this uh, tissue of uh, uh, connectivity and uh, well, in order to, to, to have uh, more efficient and faster um, decisions, um, well, we, we have here um, to, to deal with, with the edge and, and, and fog, fog uh, computing nodes. Um, not only seeing every single sensor as a connection to the cloud and having uh, multiple uh, pipelines, but uh, integrating as much as possible on the on the edge of of this nervous system uh, some some decisions and uh, well even having the constraints of of the hardware on the edge um, we 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 can apply some some AI driven uh, decisions as well. Um, we make this um, by our own uh, as UBWare, but also uh, using some some joint ventures. Uh, for example, this smart lamp post is a is an initiative with um, with two two other European leaders in their business uh, areas. So the, the largest metal pole um, manufacturer in Europe, Metallo Galva and, uh, and, and, and ProF, uh, our, our core partner for um, maintenance and building uh, smart city infrastructure. Um, well, th this is a, a, a smart lamp post. Um, well, with, for example, in this case, EV charging capabilities, uh, we are also um, building neutral hosting capabilities for, for mobile operators. And at the same time, we, are, we have some edge nodes, um, well, for data-driven companies 
um, operators um, or even SMEs that want to build their uh, compute continuum solutions uh, on, on this infrastructure, neutral infrastructure. Um, well, and that's uh, all I have for you right now. Perfect, perfect, Ruiz. It was a perfect overview, and I like also from data about two nerves, let's say, <laughs> like in the human body, uh, and to create impact uh, um, um, where you see also some business KPIs, which you are showing here. And uh, for sure, building up this is a great uh, topic. And now, uh, you know, I know Hank Young uh, since here, so I can directly ask him, how can you help him? <laughs> Hank Young, coming from TNO, from research perspective, the floor is yours. You have to switch on your mic, uh, I think. And your slide is visible. It's a traditional one, actually. Thanks. I, I think my slides are visible uh, right now, yeah? Okay. Yes, they are visible. Okay, it's a very broad topic uh, we are discussing today. And you uh, see in all the, uh, all the different presentations so far that a lot of elements come into place. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the kind invitation to, uh, uh, to speak here. It's great to be in this panel. Um, I pushed my button, but nothing seems to move. So. Something is not going well. Um, I try again. But was it was working? It was working for you. Uh, yeah, see, yeah. everything was everything was fine. You see it again. Just put yeah. the presentation mode, and then we are done. Hopefully, perfect. It's working. Presentation mode, everything fine. There we are. Okay. Yes, uh, it's already been said today, yeah, but we're heading for a. Uh, uh, our digital future that will be founded on data connectivity uh, and intelligence uh, in Europe. And it was also mentioned that a level playing field uh, for European industry is very important. But for me, it's uh, also important for non-European industry to have a level playing field uh, within Europe. Eh? So in all these discussions, I believe that we should not place a fence around Europe because we have a strong industry industrial base in Europe that, uh, and we rely on uh, the other continents as well for our income as Europe. So it's good to have a balanced approach towards a digital uh, Europe. Um, well, having said that, uh, we, we learned earlier today have fair rules on data access and reuse of data, common and interoperable data spaces, and data sovereignty, stay in full control of the data. I think we have seen this growing over the past years. And for me, uh, coming in the, being active in the data uh, BDVA community uh, for the last uh, six, uh, seven years. Uh, uh, I think we, uh, uh, the whole ID and the whole consensus that's, uh, that's getting uh, uh, on these uh, topics within Europe, it's really great to see that we've gone so far already. And I think uh, uh, we really need that. Uh, quick scan uh, on national base, we, we have a large uh, Dutch AI coalition and we actually did a quick scan on the architectures, the frameworks uh, that are available for data sharing in Europe. And we see that no uh, data sharing activity is currently really dominant. Uh, we see no fully developed architectures, but we really need them. And we see some of the architectures, Fiverr and IDS, uh, were active when we did this uh, analysis. And nowadays, GaiaX, of course, they are logical starting points. And we really believe that we should embrace the, 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 the data sharing initiatives, the data sharing uh, frameworks in the making. And we really should make that federated approach. And here I'd like to share a, 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 a copy of a slide from uh, Professor uh, Boris Otto. Last week he showed this, and it's, this is about the automotive sector, but I very much like the layered approach he has here. Because when you want to reach a fully working data sharing initiative and when you want to create a really uh, a full, uh, fully working uh, uh, business modeling uh, uh, for in this case mobility ecosystem but it counts for all uh, data spaces we want to reach uh, companies need to have to deliver their own individual business models but we also need intermediaries to create these business models we need business models for the infrastructure part and we should find out in Europe and uh, with companies what are the hurdles on all these levels and what we could actually do. Um, at the same time, we see that over the past six, seven years, all over Europe, a lot of data spaces already were in the making. And we didn't call them data spaces in these days, but they were in the making. And I would like to share a specific example uh, we have in the Netherlands. 
And why would I like to share this example? Because it has a lot of SMEs involved. And we are all searching for SMEs uh, and to show SMEs how can they benefit from AI, from data. Um, so this is a, a, an example on the smart connected supply network. The problem is as follows. You see the OEMs we have uh, in, the, in the Netherlands and they, uh, uh, well, they have at the, at the uh, uh, they drive the uh, supply chain for their products. And in this uh, uh, supply chains, you see that a lot of innovation is pushed from the OEM into the first, second, third tier. And as complexity arises, this innovation uh, pace gets higher and higher and higher. So SMEs supplying these components, sub, sub uh, uh, products, uh, they have to innovate every day. And at the same time, they have to comply to uh, sometimes an administrative burden uh, coming from the OEM. Uh, yeah. And uh, so what we see is that uh, uh, to actually, uh, uh, now what we see nowadays is that every company for every individual data transaction, they have to set up a new e EDI uh, connection. They have to set up uh, and they have to comply to the uh, uh, systems which are dictated by the OEM. Uh, what we believe is that we can do better. Huh? We could have a uh, ontology in place. We can have a one-time connect in place where you actually uh, uh, can uh, allow the individual SMEs how to uh, share their data along data uh, chains and uh, with different uh, supply chains they are in. And uh, what we see from the, coming from this approach is that we uh, 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 created the data standard, the communication data standard, where actually 20% increased productivity. And we see that a lot of less faults are being made in this whole supply chain. So this is just an example where actually the uh, uh, it was initiated, co-initiated by a, lot, a, group, a group of uh, uh, SMEs. And of course, you need a lot of ERP uh, manufacturers. You need the OEMs to comply uh, in the end. But it was initiated by uh, uh, the SMEs in this sense. Well, this is just one data sharing example, one data space example, you could say, but we see a lot of data spaces all over Europe and in the Netherlands as well. And you see they all have one common goal and approach. They want to keep the data at the source, sovereignty. They want an open ecosystem for partners to join and they all seek for a federated approach. So the sectors, they uh, uh, require alignment. That's what we see as well. Uh, they don't stop at the border and they have close relations and interest. For instance, this manufacturing example, a lot of these uh, suppliers, these SMEs, they also deliver to German OEMs. So we really need to align and we need to create interoperability. And so for me, the main challenge is to unify data spaces across sectors, countries, and across technologies. Uh, for me, interoperability will be key in the coming years. And I see that a lot of things are already going on. And I really believe that we should uh, embrace initiatives like IAX and IDS uh, to create this important step forward. So that's what I would like to share uh, from you. And it's a specific part of what we're discussing today, of course. But I really think that this uh, data sharing uh, soft infrastructures need, is really a good foundation to build on for the European industry. So uh, that's what I want to leave it with. Many thanks, uh, Hank Young, um, and uh, I like all this uh, your direct approach, <laughs> the hands-on approach. And uh, I can tell this, you know, we know it since years and uh, understand uh, each other very, very well. But I like this always, as you mentioned, the smart industry initiative and the network, how you're building this. It's always direct to the point or impact and di directly oriented. And uh, only to to give you two thoughts about this. Uh, one is regarding your right. When you're speaking about digitalization, data, data usage, data, new business model, then you're speaking about interoperability. And when you're speaking about interoperability, then you're speaking about standardization. And that's how uh, the, the things are uh, coming uh, together. And I can tell you, and you're right, uh, we have uh, in other initiatives, standardization initiatives regarding ontologies to describe machine systems, don't ask me things virtual or real things uh, regarding the companions make a huge initiative running and this is mainly driven from the people who have the know-how meaning the smes what is needed uh, to exchange so fully aware of and regarding um, uh, your, your your vote to have some kind of collaboration you know with idsa with bdba with kix uh, you know this with, with boris you mentioned boris otto is setting up really uh, some kind of uh, uh, 
join forces together uh, regarding data spaces, uses of data, and so on. But now I want not to to uh, spend too uh, too much word and not to give uh, uh, Philip his uh, perspective. Uh, and I see your 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 camera is working because I see in the yes. chat uh, it's not working. And very happy that you are with us today and giving us from your perspective some kind of um, uh, uh, overview. Do you want to share your slide from your uh, laptop the slides? Can, I can share my slides, yes, that's fine. Okay, and many, many thanks. So can you see that? Yes, and yes, running perfect. So when you put it in full screen mode, you can screen. leave it as, as it is. So. Oh. Excellent. So um, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Um, just uh, for let's say what I would like to do today: a quick introduction to who we actually are in Unternehmer to Applied AI, and then a little bit of perspective on data. But just to my personal press, I was actually I'm based here in Munich, Germany, right now. But I was born in Lisbon, so it's a particular privilege to <laughs> be here to join this, you know, with Portugal as a host country. So very quickly, for those of you who don't know, who are we as Unternehmertum Applied AI? First of all, Unternehmertum is uh, Europe's largest entrepreneurship center. Um, it's actually um, uh, perhaps just, you know, for, from it's based here in Munich. It's just for for perhaps the, 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 the most important numbers we create about, so to say, a little bit more than one scalable startup per week and the startups that come out of the ecosystem collected over the last year more than $1 billion of venture capital this year. So it's a production of entrepreneurship. And that's what I'm also you know, coming back to at, at one point. In addition, we obviously have lots of corporate partners and Applied AI is an initiative within that. We are all non-for-profit. It's all non-for-profit, both Unternehmertum and Applied AI. And we help companies compete successfully in the AI age. And that's via two things. First of all, we have a platform with lots of I should say partners and an ecosystem to exchange this. That's what you're building here in terms of data spaces to have an informal exchange with companies to have it. And the other one, we actually help on specific innovations. And just so you get an idea, so to say, we we we, we have so our core things are really academies. So we train a lot of people, both physically about 2,000 a year, as well as in many more, so to say, uh, in, uh, via digitally, we build stuff for many of the German and European entities in terms of AI trainings. Then we do specific strategies, and then we do, you know, you know, top level projects, often leading edge stuff that's supported also by um, the scientific and or research community to to advance AI. And, and at the core, that's really what I'm. What, what our knowledge is we are based on. We have, so to say, lots of industries partners. We have uh, that that we are the primary people we work with, and then we have the, you know, the technology partners who support us uh, with infrastructure, with all kind of things, and then we work with uh, with the public and and uh, uh, and not for profit ecosystem all around uh, Europe primarily, uh, and obviously with links uh, globally, in particular to the US and and Asia. Okay, so that's just you know where we're coming from. So now a little bit, you know, in terms of AI, we focus really on the on the AI part of data, right? Not of the other data. And perhaps you know, it's it was very interesting. I think you covered all this. Obviously, um, the focus here is in, for me is really in industrial data. Um, so I don't cover all the consumer, and I would put healthcare and end markets of mobility in that, which obviously is a huge issue in terms of privacy, etc. And I think. The three things that were already mentioned that are absolutely critical is obviously to have data flows, particularly international data flows, to have clouds based in Europe, and to have you know data flow and and um, and enablement across the supply chain. I think these are absolutely critical from the industrial part. But beyond that, I would also like to point out you know what are complementary things that we find extremely important and that are at the core of what our partners are discussing. I mean the simple thing is obviously when always when you discuss when you discuss AI with partners, I mean it's well you know data is for money for AI what money is for people you always want more right I mean yes, you always want more <laughs> data pools, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a little bit of a trade-off, so to say, between domain know-how and data pools. If you have lots of domain know-how, you can deal with less data, but if, if you have enough data, you might not even need domain know-how. Um, but still, lots of our companies actually have the following issues. The first issue is um, obviously just cleaning up their own data. I think we have nothing to say here. And that's, if, if we look at you know, where they, in the AI maturity, which is the core issue in industrial AI, it's actually the old data. And the other thing I want to point out is that 
everybody is trying to approach is what are uh, methods and how do we advance and what are the core issues in order to need less data. And I would like to point out, you know, if two particularly, uh, two or three developments, you know, over the last years that tell you how you can have less. And that also points to some of the complementary things that we desperately need. The first one, and excuse me for the, the historic slide, is to say, you know, that's to say, okay, is to say, well, if you want less real world label data, that's what really all the companies want. Um, if you want to develop AI, you need more computing power, but simulation comp compatibility and new algorithm. That tell you a few things. First of all, I, I love chess. Some of you know I used to be a professional chess player in my youth. Um, but I just want to point out one thing. As some of you might know, there's lots of history of chess and you know, Gary Kasparov, yes, he lost uh, at one point. But the recent developments are actually very interesting, and I would like to point out to Alpha Zero. Alpha Zero is perhaps famous for playing chess, go and shogi. I don't play chess, uh, go and shogi, so I focus on chess. <laughs> and as you might know, Alpha Zero was trained to play chess within four hours. It didn't get any external data, and it plays the best chess ever seen, very human like, just much better. and. Um, and killed all other chess machines, so to say. I mean, a famous grandmother saying is, I always wondered how a um, superior race from a different planet would play chess, and now I know. So what is actually interesting about that? First of all, Alpha Zero used no external data, just none. Now you might wonder, you know, because I is trained on data, how is it possible? And that, as is, um, DeepMind actually managed to stabilize self-play. And it learned um, to play chess by playing 300,000 games against itself within four hours. Four hours is actually what a typical tournament chess play means. So for, it means it plays essentially 300,000 times faster than the humans do. And that's a very important thing for that is that if you manage to learn from, so to say, virtual simulated data, um, electronic signals are about 5 million times faster than the signals in our brain. So you are about, you know, you can easily be 1 to 10 million times faster. And you might say, well, what does this have to do with industrial data? As, as you might know, five years ago, when you talked about autonomous driving, everyone was counting the miles that everyone was driving. You know, people counted how many miles did Uber drive, how many miles did Tesla drive, how many times did, um, did, did, did Google drive. Then NVIDIA came up and said, look, we are training pilots on on simulation, we can train self-driving cars on simulation, and they create a constellation. And by now, it's one of the hottest topics, if you say, if you can train in a virtual environment, you can train a million times faster. And in a certain way, you replace data by compute. And one of the things that, that is my first point that worries me most is that in Europe, we don't have enough GPU superclusters. We actually don't have enough compute outside the um, outside the hyperscalers. And I think that's one of the things we have to be important that in industry and all you have the discussions with all the industrial companies, they trying to create digital twins in order to, you know, if, if you can close the reality gap with a digital twin, you can train much faster. And that's extremely important for AI and engineering and industrial parts, but you need compute, first thing. Second thing, and that's also development of the last year, as you might know, the last year had a breakthrough in language. A GPT-3 by um, OpenAI is the biggest language model ever created and by far the best we have seen. Now, the interesting thing is, how was it actually trained? <laughs> it didn't have any, obviously you can't use label data to train a model. It has 175 billion parameters, just so you know what you, what you have to train. Um, so it, it did what we call self-supervised learning. It trained itself on the internet. Essentially by, you take a sentence, you mask a word, and then you have to guess that word. And that's how it trains. And now it's a gigantic pre-trained model. And now you can do AI with very few data. As you, uh, for those of you who had had access to it, you can do very little sentences with very few examples and you get outstanding results. Now, the second point I have, we, these pre-trained models are incredibly powerful and these are general purpose pre-trained models and we don't have any of them in Europe. So the question of, and obviously I know Gaia X is picking it up, how do you get 
the pre-trained models that are developing right now in Europe is one of the of, of the second points. And, and if you see what happened in, in AlphaFold, it's the same idea. Google DeepMind went, you know, we can go where we have lots of data or we can, we can simulate. It's all the same thing. You have you have at the one hand you to trade data for compute, on the other hand, with simulation and digital twin, and on the other hand, you go for pre-trained models and then build on the pre-trained models. And that's you know, pre-trained models might be just as important as data pools. And the last point I have is really, if you say, you know, who actually desperately needs data, also in the industrial environment, and these are startups. Young companies, SME, are also, you know, part of that. They obviously, while companies have data and can approach their own customers, established companies, startups don't. And the third thing that's critical in Europe, we have to create innovative new players, because if we don't have the players, we, we remain an egg economy and, 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 and colonies don't have a vote, right? So we have to create a player. We might be able to regulate Europe, but not the world. That really has two things. A, obviously all the companies and even the governments can act as early customers. I think it's one of them. And for those data pools are absolutely critical, right? So it just to, 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 to summarize, so to say, I think, yes, you always want more data, but there are now, we, we should be, in particular in industry, we should be very careful not to optimize the past, but to optimize the future. And the future is definitely both in pre-trained models and transfer learning and in uh, the interplay of digital twin and learning actions, so to say. And so equally important is to say without that, that, you know, get for the industrial mind and get really compute super clusters, get European pre-trained models, and for Christ's sake, the one the one group, and obviously as an entrepreneurship center, we are particularly um, uh, vocal about that, help the young companies with access to data. You can be that by just being a customer or really creating data pools. Thank you very much. Uh, Philip, many thanks, uh, many, many thanks for this presentation and also showing the different uh, dimension about data, pre-trained model, uh, like I mentioned before. And, um, and you are right, I always, when I'm speaking about, and you know, I'm coming from the, from the big company, I know how difficult it is, uh, we mentioned the data topic, but also to create new business models and uh, how you are, let's say, in this case, I'm allowed, blocked in in, in, in the topic, disruptive uh, topics, which is always, uh, oh, what, what are you thinking about? So 100% uh, agreeing that we have to look how we can um, create uh, new startups new, and with this, of course, new business models and new opportunities for us um, uh, in Europe. And uh, many thanks uh, for your thoughts and also to differentiate the data for what data, Britain model, what others are doing. And I'm not a professional chess player, so I will never play with your chess because I will lose immediately. Uh, but this was really um, in, in impressive how you're doing this. Now, maybe uh, Stephanie, um, um, give your thoughts again from the topic. And then we have a quick round about, because you're giving us so much uh, impressions, which all of the auditorium has to digest. Um, uh, maybe Stephanie, you're giving from, from your perspective uh, coming from research, but also having an, an, an SME, so to say, uh, or an, an startup, uh, let's phrase it, it's just uh, your, your impressions about. Stefano, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And I'm, I'm very happy to be part of the data week, even uh, if it's uh, just virtual. Um, yeah, let me just say a few words about uh, the No Center. So No Center is actually not a startup because we are already there for 20 years. Um, we have, uh, we basically are something which we would now call a data innovation hub because we've been uh, working with startups and uh, uh, with companies um, for, for a long, long time. So we basically, we do each year more than a hundred um, industry projects, uh, many of them with startups, uh, with SMEs, sorry, now we talked so much about startups, now I cannot get this out of my head. So SMEs, so 70% of the companies we work with are SMEs. And um, so uh, we have more than 100 such partners um, in the center. And basically our uh, goal is to accompany them and help them um, on the journey of uh, more digitization, of using intelligent uh, AI technologies and of course um, data. So um, 
my experiences now with the last, um, let's say, uh, more than a year Corona and in everything is that we now need, really need to capitalize on the movement which uh, that has uh, generated. So there's now more openness towards those technologies. But I also already experienced a lot of people saying now, oh, okay, so now finally this is over. Now we can lean back and not uh, uh, really uh, engage in this uh, too much anymore. So I think we really need to see that we can keep this um, momentum of really deeply embedding uh, digital and AI um, into the business strategies and the thinking. And because at the moment, this is in many, many companies still just skin deep. Uh, it's just a little bit an add-on. Most of the time, you know, you optimize a little bit something or you make something nicer or faster or better, but it's not really this um, change of, of mind. And so I really think now that we have, um, the EU has set up this, this framework um, in which um, uh, things can move forward. Now I think we really need a little bit of switch. Now we really have to nurture experiments and promote risk incentive risk intensive initiatives, um, even with the SMEs and, um, and, and companies. So it, in a way it's a, like an awareness transformation, change the way we think uh, or the companies think about their assets, about their data. And um, what I experience is, is that what's really difficult about this is that you have to be a creative destruction person doing this. Basically, while you're building up something new, you have to uh, destroy something within the company or uh, certain things will change, will have to change. And maybe that's a little bit more like the Wild West uh, as opposed to this orderly fashion in which we like to, um, uh, to do things. So I, I, I would argue in addition to having this top-down approach, now we really need to foster the bottom up um, and what I'm uh, seeing now in specifically regional, national areas is this uh, starting that um, certain companies come together to collaboratively redesign their ecosystems in which they sit and just to talk about the data flows uh, which they have and um, and to yeah, discuss what would it actually mean if uh, one of them or many of them changes their business models, what's the effect and um, how can we, they together go through this transitions. So um, I would um, wish if we could have more sandboxes, um, more experiments, more cascading funding, more um, opportunities to just really um, try out out um, things also uh, not talking about the Gaia X or ISD um, uh, initiatives also there it would be great to have early on prototypes to really try them out because at the moment it's often just you know a, a concept or um, uh, something which is very difficult to grasp um, and so it would really be helpful even to have like you know lower level prototypes of these things to to cut out early and to to be able to work with them. Um, another um, point which um, I'm very much concerned with is <clears throat> the creation of those data infrastructures or the data um, spaces. Um, so uh, it's still, I think, largely unclear, at least to me, let's say it this way, how those data spaces will actually be filled with data. So there's a lot of the architecture, there's a lot of the legislation around it, but how does the data actually really get in there and through which initiatives do they get in there? Do, do they get in through the digital innovations hubs or the European digital innovation hubs or, or, or any um, other way? And um, so for example, here in Styria, we have an initiative where we are trying to, to build a Styrian uh, data infrastructure which combines um, everything from science, so the, your, the open science cloud part, um, with the industrial um, players um, and to see uh, how, how this can work. And actually this is not limited to a specific um, sector, but it is actually rather um, general. And we're trying to see how, how this will work out and um, yeah. 
this would be interesting for me to also to hear um, the, the players on EU level to, for their understanding on how these data spaces can actually be um, filled. Um, and finally, um, yeah, we've been hearing a lot about digital twins and um, I absolutely agree everything what has been said. Um, the technical sovereignty on that um, aspect, um, I think will be um, crucial. And um, so we not only have to integrate phys physical and digital worlds, but we have to create these kind of hybrid environments and where we people can be um, virtually there or physically there and, and interact with the real factory and the digital factory. So it's quite a complicated interaction with these, these pre-trained models, which you can then through transformation learning actually use in these specific um, environments. And there for me, the question is, how do we really keep these um, uh, technologies or the companies which we're building up there now in the EU, uh, EU instead of losing them um, to uh, other parts of the world? Because that's my experience now here being also um, some kind of a startup uh, producer and uh, the real um, successful ones tend to migrate out um, very fast. Um, yeah, so this was uh, my statement. Thanks for listening. Many thanks, uh, Stephanie, and only uh, to God, only if you mentioned the risk. Um, uh, I can you one, one story, um, uh, you know, sometimes you're flying to an, uh, some kind of famous uh, 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 centers, areas in the world, more to the rest. And I was in a, with a venture capital bank together and they told me, okay, so are, uh, let's say they're accepting that maybe 90% of the investment is go going wrong, 10% will proceed, or 9% will be successful, 1% will be the uh, shooting star. So that's the one uh, KPIs they have. Uh, knowledge, but they have also an other KPI, and this was a banker, really as I said, it vice versa. And when we are only uh, with 80% not successful, we are thinking also about investing, investing we, we in the right uh, manner. Of course, we now uh, can uh, see Philip smiling. Now I can uh, drive to Munich, it's closer, and speak with Unternehmer Tom about this. Uh, uh, but you're right. But I can tell you that some kind in, in, in different areas, a little bit a nice discussion that you have. And the second comment you write uh, regarding um, a data space, uh, filling a data space, you know, uh, only you have uh, with Espan, um, part of the city of Vienna. And, and, and a quite nice uh, area where you have smart energy, smart buildings, smart traffic, smart manufacturing, don't ask me what, uh, let's say it's an open mm, sandbox uh, where we are developing this. But this is only uh, to conclude or not to spend or to use much time because I want to have at least one, one quick round uh, to the, uh, around you. And I'll start with, 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 with Ivo and maybe I immediately get the, the request <laughs> or some request from him, uh, uh, but I will, I will be. I'm quite optimistic, uh, you know, what, what do you expecting uh, from industry? What should industry doing, um, let's say, to complement the activities? And the industry is really the big ones, the small ones, the startups, I will not um, uh, phrase this. And let's say, what's in for us, speaking from industry, let's phrase it in this way. Maybe you can elaborate very quickly about and maybe catching up also some thoughts from the previous speakers. Yeah, no, uh, thank you for this question, uh, Thomas. Uh, I think actually the question is not what should industry do to complement what the EU is doing, but what should the EU do to complement what industry is doing? This should be driven by industry uh, to make it really work. Huh? <laughs> now, the first thing, and um, Stephanie hinted at that, is a change in mindset. Um, it, it's really important to, um, to share data, but that really... Uh, takes a change in mindset in the organizations. Um, and of course, it's also important to, to demonstrate the use cases for, for data sharing to show that, that it really works. Now, skills has been mentioned also by, by uh, several speakers in the interventions. It's, it's essential. Um, then a second thing is, well, of course, we are very happy if you contribute to to our initiatives. There will be an online consultation open shortly on the Data Act, and I would like to invite everyone really to be very active and, and to contribute to that. Then on the data spaces, well, um, make the data spaces happen, um, both on the governance side, both on the infrastructural side, 
And uh, indeed, populating the data spaces is one of the key the key issues. Now, um, data sharing does not mean that all the data should be available for free. Um, there can be very good incentives for companies to share the data in a monetary sense, but also pooling data can have other advantages, even if no money changes hands or working with shared uh, data analytics uh, infrastructures can also can also be an advantage in terms of uh, data sharing. Now, another thing um, that we would expect is the creation and pooling of demand for data assets, right? Um, if that is done in common, and uh, when it's clear where the demand for data is, uh, that can also work in a, in a very positive way. Now then, um, investing in data sharing technologies, for example, the privacy preserving technologies, but also uh, technologies underpinning data markets, that will be important things in Horizon Europe, and we will have calls for proposals in relation to that. And last but not least, and then I stop, uh, Thomas, is to, to join and shape the new partnership on AI, data, and robotics. I think that is really a game changer and, and very important development. And please uh, be part of that, uh, of that uh, development. I leave it at that, uh, Thomas, for now, unless you have a very specific... Uh... No, no, it's perfect. It should be only uh, some kind of wrapping up uh, because we get uh, a lot of different aspects uh, which everybody uh, has to digest. I think it was uh, very good uh, from all of you. Um, uh, but maybe I'm handing uh, directly over to, to, to Stephanie and, 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 and Heng Yang, uh, you know, um, um, skills you mentioned or how transfer uh, you mentioned, how can we, and uh, Stephanie, you mentioned this also in your talk, but also to Heng Yang, what from a research perspective you can do, um, especially maybe into, into, into SMEs, which may be a little bit from the research perspective, also to really to, to address this deployment uh, uh, topic. Uh, what are your thoughts about this? How can we facilitate, facilitate an efficient transfer of the know-how, which are you developing inside uh, the research and academia topic? And how can we transfer this? Because especially to SMEs. And young, exactly. Okay, thanks. Um, I, I really, really like uh, the comment uh, Stephanie made on the sandboxes. I think that's very important also to include uh, uh, startups, uh, scale ups, SMEs. Um, in an uh, example I showed, you see that uh, sometimes it takes a community building effort. And this, this time it was done by. Uh, TNO, huh? we are a, a research and technology organization, and we are not in it for a single company, but we are uh, uh, in it to well to have uh, generic met methodologies to create generic frameworks. So we actually set up a community of SMEs who had a common problem, and only by doing it together, uh, they had the skill to actually uh, make pro progress. And so I think community building is very important. Sandboxes are uh, very important. Um, and of course, dissemination is very important. We should set up uh, uh, channels to disseminate. And for instance, uh, our BDVA PPP, but also the new uh, ADR PPP can be uh, really great uh, uh, channels for dissemination as well. Mm -hmm. Many thanks, Hank Young. Uh, Stephanie, something to add? Or maybe also what Hank Young or Ivo said before. Um, yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, um, I think it's important to offer these kind of basic um, platforms um, for, for people to build on. So I think this is a great example there from TNO, also from Ubiware. Uh, that seems to be a great um, platform where also other people can add on and other startups can, can, um, can build on. Um, so uh, I think in order to really get to the SMEs, I, I, I don't think there's another way of, of uh, really uh, talking with them and working with them and really trying to, um, to have like these little project um, experiments where they can really then feel how it how it could work and what what the next um, step could be. And I'm, I always um, observe it with companies who have. Um, uh, leaders who are very technology oriented or, or just interested in, in AI stuff, they, they jump to it and they really um, like doing it. But then there's also a whole lot of people who are very, very scared and they're, um, and, and, and yeah, it's, it's 
for them it's really difficult and i think that just changing a mindset is not enough because you know, somebody can change the mindset but still not want to do it because he or she does not want to risk uh, the existing business model and i think that's that's really a, a problem and they're maybe sitting down so here in austria we have now with the um geo uh, initiative tried to set up these um uh, small representatives of ecosystems to help people talk about these kind of things. So, so what would I have to maybe change and or where would I have a reduced income, but where I might have actually an added income if I take part in such an ecosystem and data flows. Um, uh, yeah. Many, many, many things. Maybe uh, to Philip, uh, you know, I know, uh, as well, we know since this time, you have also a, a life before, uh, applied AI, <laughs> let's phrase it in, in this way. What is your hint? Uh, what tools would we implement? What processes have we to measure the impact of uh, data and AI? Uh, uh, usage or something else. What is what is your hint? Um, uh, let's say to, uh, to get it done in and for Europe, uh, because somebody else, I think Hank Young mentions this, is also a lot uh, what we're doing outside or uh, how we are uh, applying this uh, in the world, because most of us are anyway uh, global uh, active. <coughs> Happy to say so, just for full disclosure, so I before I applied AI, I was a senior part of the Boston Consulting Group, and I had the yeah, I built up the whole AI for over five years, you know, globally, and, and obviously saw also a lot about you know Europe versus Asia and the US and 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 these uh, specific parts, and you know also worked with the World Economic Forum a lot. So I think from the data side, I think the three things on the industrial AI side and the data side, you know, let's focus on that. I think the three things that were mentioned. <coughs> Building supply chain, you know, things as uh, standards accounts with pricing, clouds in Europe, and you know, and and uh, uh, allow for international data flows were probably the most critical thing on really the the, the data side. Uh, I mean, sometimes you see, you know, should we measure it all? <coughs> what was asked, I think you should measure AI maturity definitely. You know, I think we're we're also launching a big effort with the Bundesverband der Deutschen Industrie, you know, to do it at least here. On the on so to say going forward, you know, I think, you know, that's what I try to put in myself when I say what are companies really struggling with, I think we should go a little bit beyond data, you know, as I said, the biggest issue is probably pre trained models, where we really have an issue, um, we have lots of, for example, companies that have very highly confidential say, data, they simply cannot use a model GPT three with the current access in the US, you could not do it in order to, for example, uh, different military from non-military data also in your whole knowledge management. So this is really, really difficult. I see companies wasting money with, you know, lots of, um, of individual customized, you know, service providers that build models which they could just use. So I think that's one. And as I said, the GPU access in order to, to really move towards the digital twin and to, 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 to use the new methods in order to replace data by compute um, and as always, as I said, you know, focus on helping the small, the small and startup business because the innovation part is just so critical. And if you compare where Europe fell behind the US and China, it's not in the established company. It's not that a Siemens ever fell behind a GE, right? <laughs> if I may say so. That was not our problem. Our problem was that there were lots of new companies coming up. And I think the focus also of the European Commission to focus, you know, a bit how can we help the new sector arising where obviously regulations are always a little bit sensitive because they, they they slow things down you know how can we compensate by still helping these startups and the new ideas develop because it will be the new businesses that will help us yeah, ab ab absolutely right and when you are addressing uh siemens maybe i answered uh, directly is that you know <laughs> Uh, we, we smelling this also internally when you acquire uh, new, 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 new companies, new ideas. You immediately touching a you know a completely other area where I was like, oh wow, how is they handling the ecosystem? Okay, we have only this normal uh, supplier customer relation. They are treating an ecosystem in a completely other way. That's only some experience. Uh, uh, Lara, uh, maybe in, in short view, uh, uh, how you see uh, as digital Europe in comparison also how other regions in the world are doing, You're giving also a lot of uh, indication measures uh, uh, before. 
Yeah, th thank thank you very much. And I think it, it was indeed great listening actually to the other to the other panelists, especially also the points that uh, that Stephanie uh, raised and and later also Philip on you know how do we keep uh, startups in Europe? What's you know how how do we improve uh, the the market? I think just uh, uh, you know as I as also started my presentation, I think we need to have a common idea on on what success will look like or you know what what are we aiming towards and. To the to your question earlier, like how do we measure progress? I think it's 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 very important that we have these KPIs. You know, how do we what what do we want to achieve in the coming years in terms of SMEs using big data analytics? Uh, you know, the the world's share of uh, unicorns in for, from Europe. These kind of uh, KPIs and as Digital Europe, we established quite a comprehensive uh, set. Uh, ha happy to share them, and it's great to see that actually also the European Commission with the Digital Decade is is ex exactly moving in in that uh, direction so i think yeah very important to have a clear idea of what are we aiming towards and uh, and some clear yeah goals that that can actually be uh, be measured so uh, i will leave it uh, at that and uh, okay. yeah many thanks for the great contributions uh, for everyone maybe many thanks and now i will really uh, ask you and uh, Rui, i will start for, for, for with you and i put the <laughs> questions around i said what should we not do? Uh, I think I learned from my other panel, and I will ask you all, what should we not do? And make it really, what should we not do? <laughs> Just one, two word or one sentence. Um, oh, so what should we do not do? So we, we should not uh, have uh, vendor locking uh, solutions, um, so approaches. Um, we, it was already discussed, but um, what we we aim as a as SME is to have an interoperable world. So the world is changing, at least in software, uh, very fast for microservices. So dealing with the uh, monolithic uh, uh, solutions, uh, single solutions, uh, very very close and proprietary, not only on the on the software, on the code, but also on the interfaces. So it's it's really difficult for us. So entering um, business that that are very mature um, in a agile and uh, um, progressive way is uh, is our, our way to to make new new, mm -hmm. new business. Perfect. Maybe to Hang Young, what should we not do? Very three sentence. Uh, let's say it's a style in Netherlands. What should we not do? <laughs> We should not stop uh, going forward, and we should not be able uh, uh, be afraid of making mistakes. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, we should actually make mistakes uh, if we really want to push our boundaries. Okay, Philip. It's very simple. <clears throat> Europe should definitely regulate less. And let me be precise why. We've had lots of discussions. We as Applied AI are always invited to comment. And the regulation has to be fact-based. Because it has to be fact-based, it focuses on past problems. And focusing on past problems, it, it very often hampers future developments. So I think one should be, well, there should be kind of be a barrier <laughs> to say, you know, you know, how much can you regulate? And have you, you know, is the balance of enabling versus regulation correct? <laughs> Thank you very much. I can tell you we have, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago, and an webinar with Gaia X together, BDBA and Gaia X. Uh, and uh, uh, this question was also given from, uh, or this answer was also given from Wolfgang Waltz, the professor from the DFKA. He said, in other words, but exactly the same. But now, you know, Ivo, now it's up to you. <laughs> Sorry for this. <laughs> no, I, I think we should not uh, play down Europe's strengths. So I don't think we should be too modest in our aims and really and really uh, aim for the top. Good. Lara, and then of course, last but not least, Stephanie, so you have the most time to prepare yourself. <laughs> I think what we should not do is is isolate ourselves, uh, isolate ourselves as Europe or as countries, um, but really think, think towards the aims and and how to how to achieve them so think cross-border think uh, international uh, but with the european uh, vision in in mind perfect and now stephanie you have the famous last words yeah, and i want to reiterate do not over regulate i totally agree there um i um i've seen the dsgvo has a lot of good parts but it has really scared uh 
especially SMEs and any company I've ever talked to to touch their data. And it's, that's really a, a pity. So perfect, and not to uh, uh, extend this uh, too long. We are anyway some minutes above the time, but I think it was a very good uh, panel. Many thanks to all of you, uh, to the participants, uh, and to your thoughts. I think we have a lot to digest, and uh, now I want, will hand over uh, to the uh, moderator also and, and close this uh, very good uh, uh, panel which we have had uh, until now. Many thanks. Thank you.